Hi there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rosy Rivera and for today's class I am sharing how to dye your cold porcelain clay. We're going to try some different colors, so I hope you like this project. Let's get started. To begin, we're going to use our cold porcelain clay that we already share here on the channel. You can find the recipe linked on the card right here. I store it on an airtight container and always in their separate bags and everything needs to be closed properly. I prefer using these sort of bigger bags so that way I can place the clay at the very bottom and then just roll it in the rest of the bag and that keeps it a little bit more airtight and safe. If you made our recipe you should get roughly 2.5 cups of clay or that is also 17.5 ounces or 500 grams. Now what we're going to do first is just get our natural clay and then we're just going to measure that out and knead it thoroughly and we're going to start working in slow increments. So it's better to just get small pieces of clay since it's going to make it, dyeing it will make it last a little bit less. If your clay was a little bit warm from the night before, then we are going to have to take it out the next day, knead it once again, and make sure we don't have any excess moisture on the bag or on the clay. Because that will make it grow mold or it will just render it useless. So now we're going to start dyeing it. And I always start by dyeing it in the primary colors. And then I use the dyed clay to get the secondary and tertiary colors. That keeps me from getting my hands dirty with paint too often and it just it's just easier for my workflow. So I use these acrylics since they're in a sort of paste and the paint is very thick. It ha doesn't have as much water as uh, other acrylics. So again, I'm using the primary colors here. So a very bright red, yellow, and blue. Of course, you can definitely use any of these other colors to dye your clay directly instead of mixing the dyed clay together. But again, this is just my preference. And to dye the, well, to paint on the pieces themselves, I use these brands right here. So you can see that's Folk Art and Tester's Craft. This is just for painting over the dry pieces or even sometimes wet pieces when you see me painting the eyes. These have a little bit more water so they're easier to manage. These aren't as good to dye the clay since you'll need to add more cornstarch to give it to keep it as to keep the right consistency. And it's not always ideal, so it's better to just go straight with a paste acrylic. I like to paint these directly just using my hands without any gloves unless I'm painting I'm dyeing dark colors. So if I'm using a very dark blue or brown, purple, especially black paint, I'll rather use um, gloves just so I don't get that paint stuck on my cuticles and around my nails, which again will affect my videos also. Okay, so I'm just getting a little bit of paint on the clay. You can see the consistency of the paint right here. This is why I prefer using this one for dyeing my, my clay. And to start working on this, making sure we our clay doesn't dry out, I just like to use a little bit of Vaseline and then just kneading that thoroughly to blend the color into the clay. We just need to be patient and do this slowly. If I want a dark yellow or a deep yellow, I'm going to use a natural clay base. So these primary colors, I'm just using natural clay, no white base, no anything added, just the clay and the acrylic. And I'm going slowly just to make sure I'm keeping the right consistency on the clay and I'm getting the exact shade I'm looking for. Using Vaseline as we go along as many times as needed.
it needs to be completely and thoroughly kneaded to get a uniform color. And well, I just I really love clay. I really love this cold porcelain clay, which is why I like interacting with it directly with my hands. And it's just easier for me like this, but you can use gloves if you need to. Now here I just kept mixing that and this is, I'm almost at the color I want. And here's what we need to be careful because if we add too much paint, then it's going to ruin the consistency of our clay. I'm trying to make sure it's as flexible and as moist as it needs to be to let me work on my pieces. I call this shade Sunflower Yellow. And that's all set now. Now I'm going to work on the red and I always recommend or suggest washing your hands in between each color just to make sure we don't introduce any different shades into the clay. And I'm going to store this one right now. Remember, dyed clay can dry faster and it can also go bad faster. So again, just storing it in a long bag so I can roll it. But once it's dyed, it's even better to just tie a knot so getting a better airtight seal. I've tried Ziploc bags but I don't recommend it for clay because I've had issues where there's a very small air leak for some reason and next time I try to use the clay it's dry or it cracked in the bag stuff like that. So if you're going to sort it in a Ziploc bag, I still recommend sorting it in one of these bags first. The good thing is you can reuse the bag as many times as needed if you run out of clay. So we're not wasting any plastic bags here. And now I'm um, just dyeing the red clay. I'm mentioning once more time, you can use gloves if you want to. I just really like directly touching the clay. And I'm just going to keep kneading that thoroughly, adding more paint as we go. I prefer working in smaller batches. And then just adding more Vaseline as I go. And I usually store the clay naturally, like in its natural natural state, and then just dye the amounts I will need for each project I have in mind. Now bright or deep colors like this red right here will usually dye the clay faster. And also keep in mind that cold porcelain clay will dye, will dry a couple of shades darker. Roughly two shades darker as a reference. So if you want a darker red, you might need to leave it a little bit lighter when you dye the clay. Now I'm going to dye the blue clay right here. Just adding small dabs of paint. Remember, we're going to have to test this, slowly add the color. Some colors are more intense than others. So I'm just mixing it, just like I did with the others, and then adding more paint and using Vaseline as needed. Until I get the shade I'm looking for. Again, this will dry roughly two shades darker. I like to give the little dyed clay pieces this shape, but this doesn't affect it in any way. It's completely up to you. I 
and just being careful not to get any paint on the bag so it doesn't stain any other colors or it doesn't like dry and leave a powder when I'm trying to take the clay out. Now according to basic color mixing principles, I should be able to get a white color by mixing these three together, but that would require light. So you, you might know the RGB, CYMK, and if we if I were to mix these three colors together, I would actually get a completely different color. So I'm just getting a small piece of each, getting equal amounts of each color, then just blending them together, mixing them together. This is just an experiment so you can see what you would actually get. And confirm we get a very dark sort of grayish color. So aside from my basic three primary colors, I also like to get white and black clay, dye clay, using the acrylics directly. I use white titanium and ivory black to get a very nice color, just like this. And they're all very, very bright, very nice colors. And this is where you can see the difference between the natural clay and the clay that we dyed white. Natural clay will even dry sort of translucent so you can see through it and light can pass through it while the white clay will just be white. And this is the traditional color model, color wheel model here. And to get an idea of what our color will look like, I have the white clay on the left and the natural clay on the right. So what I like to do just to get the final color is set a small piece of the clay separate, set it aside and let it dry. And once it dries, I know what shade I'm actually going to get. And a good example for that is the gnome we made last month. This is the red clay I use. It's sort of a burnt red. So I just use the base red with a little bit of black and I got this shade right here. And when it dried, it dried and it might not be as noticeable right here with my studio lights, but it's roughly one to two shades darker once it's dried. And again, just comparing the tone I got from mixing the three primary colors and the actual black clay that I use black acrylic paint on. So remember, if you just want to know what color you're actually going to get, just get a small piece, set it aside, and let it dry. And this is just a small reference because you might not be using the paints I'm using or the exact materials I'm using. And this guideline should help you get the colors you need regardless of whatever paint, brand, or materials you're using. Now I'm going to get orange, well the secondary color, so that's orange, purple, and green. And for that I'm just mixing equal parts of yellow and red to get orange, blue and red to get purple, and yellow and blue to get green. I'm only using one eighth of a teaspoon here, so I don't waste any clay right now, but this is just mixing equal parts at any amount will get you these results.
and this helps me avoid getting my hands stained again or having to get full of paint one more time I just use the existing clay that is already dyed in the colors I need and I get this I feel like it's magic every time and I just get the different colors now mixing red and blue to get purple mixing that thoroughly making sure it blends nicely remember to use Vaseline as you need if you recently wash your hands for example the clay might try to stick to your skin so just get that Vaseline and it'll glide off nicely now you might notice this is a very deep purple but it's purple nonetheless and now I'm just going to go ahead and make green and you can see it happening in real time when you get one light color like that yellow you can see the small bits and pieces of green as I start blending it and there we go the, this sort of magic continues and we get this turquoise green color and you might notice these are very dark or deep colors and now to get the tertiary colors that go after these I'm going to make this green lighter same for the purple so I'm just cutting it and same for the orange I'm going to start working on creating or getting different shades now I want this orange to be a little bit lighter so I'm going to add one eighth of a teaspoon in yellow and cut it in half and then blend it with one of those halves I set aside earlier so if you want to make orange lighter just add more yellow just like that so the original one is at the top and the one that I just added more yellow to is the one on the right the one on the bottom now and now I want more of a peach color I'm just getting a very small piece of orange so I'm getting even less orange clay and I'm going to blend that with some white clay and instead of using the strongest shade I'm going to use the one I already made a bit lighter and the best measurement is just to try it out very slowly as you get a hang of your own materials your clay your clay, your clay consistency your acrylic paints and everything else you will have a better reference of how much clay you need to mix to get the colors you want and again just kneading that thoroughly to make sure it's nice and blended now if you want to make it lighter just add yellow or white Now I'm going to do the same thing for purple, just measuring one eighth of a teaspoon of white clay. To make it lighter. The lighter I want the color, the more white has to be in the ratio. So my white to color ratio will have more white
and that will give me a lighter shade of purple as you can see right here. Just like this. Now there are two ways to brighten green as well. We can add yellow just like we did with orange or we can add white depending on the sort of shade of green we're after. I want to get a very light green so I'm using more yellow than green. And then just mixing that until we get the shade we're after. In my case this is sort of a lime green. Now if I want this to be even lighter I just need to add more yellow. If I want to make sort of an olive green. I just need to add a little bit of black clay to this lighter green. Just like this. And again we can just experiment trying to get many different colors. And right now I'm going to try to get brown and for that I'm going to use red. And now that we have our green ready, I'm going to use a small piece of green clay. Kneading that thoroughly so both colors blend well together. Just like that. And now we have brown. Now if I want to make this brown color lighter, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. And that way I'm going to get a lighter shade. Just like that. And if I want it to be even lighter, I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow. And I'm going to separate this just so we can see it more clearly. And we can make it lighter as we continue blending. And that way I get a lighter color. And if I want to get another shade and I want to get sort of a lighter color or sort of a beige tone or shade then I just need to get that lighter brown and mix it with a little bit of white. Now of course if we're going to be needing large amounts of this and I don't want to experiment trying to get the color I need you can definitely just use the acrylic paint tube and then just dye it immediately. If you don't have all those color options you can get any color you need just using these five primary colors. So the three primary colors and the two base colors so white, black, yellow, red and blue. And as you can see I just finished blending that and got that beige cream color. Now I'm going to get a turquoise blue. So I'm measuring blue. My original blue. And now I'm just separating this. And again I'm going to experiment with this color here so I'm getting the lighter the lightest green I have right now and blending it with a small piece of blue. I'm going slowly and adding more blue or more green as needed. 
and depending on what shade I get after blending these two, I can decide what I need to add more of. Since this one got this sort of more green than blue, it means I need to add more blue. So I just go back in, get my blue clay, and add a little bit more. And then just continue blending. And now I do get that shade I was going for. But to make it stand out even more and make it more noticeable, I'm going to add a little bit of white. And this all depends on what shade you're trying to get. Remember to use Vaseline as needed to keep everything nice and hydrated. And in this case, adding white will make that turquoise color stand out. Just like that. And now we have it right here. And if you want it to be even more intense, again, just go back in, get more green clay, and blend everything nicely and thoroughly. And this is just as a comparison, if we only mix white and blue, the original blue, I'm just going to get a baby blue or a light blue color. Since it won't have that little bit of green that changes the shade. Just like this. And if you want it to be lighter, we just need to add more white. Now for pink, we're just going to measure white and red. So mostly white with a little piece of red. Since red is a very strong color, if we add too much red, it's just going to overpower the white. And we'll only get a lighter red. Instead, work with a white base and add small pieces of red slowly until you get the shade you're looking for. And remember always, this will dry one to two shades darker. So keep that into account as you decide your final shade. And remember that for the primary colors, as long as we're not going to be making pastels, we don't need to add white. We can use the natural clay right away. And I do also recommend buying magenta. You can definitely get this shade using red and blue, but it's a lot of work. So it's it will save you a lot of clay and paint to just buy a little magenta too. I'm just testing it out here and you'll see the actual color we, we do get by getting a little bit more red. You see this one looks sort of washed out. It's not as intense as you would get directly with a magenta tube. You can definitely achieve that color but it is a lot of work. So I'm just going to demonstrate getting magenta right from the tube right here. This is a very nice color. Sort of like a fuchsia. I do like to use this one as a base to get some of the pink shades I'm working with just by mixing it with a little bit of white. Just like this. Just getting all that paint off of my hands. If we add more 
of the paint then we're going to get a deeper color but otherwise we're going to get this very nice bright strong color and that's just the basics for how to dye your clay and remember it's very important to store it properly I prefer to make this small knots just to give it more of an airtight seal it's not fully airtight but it's enough to let me work on it and then I store all of that into an airtight container and just keep it in a dry fresh location and then just making sure we check on it regularly to see what the conditions are in your storage area in your home and now personally natural clay can last up to a year this is for me this is how it's happened for me I've stored natural clay for an entire year now dye clay can last two to three months in my case but I do need to check it regularly so for example during the summer if it gets too moist or too humid I've noticed it can last a little bit less or roughly a month but the guideline is just to check your clay and if it does get dry you can also just add a little bit of water but again just keep checking on it and that's it for today's class if you have any questions comments or concerns feel free to reach out I'm available to help in any way I can again my name is Rosie Rivera many blessings thank you for watching